Hi, and welcome to this video. In this video, I'll be talking about the process behind painting this misty mountain scene. So this isn't going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial, but I do think and I find that it's really useful for me to look at how other people approach painting similar subjects because it helps me refine my own process and learn something from it too. So I hope that that's the case for you as you watch this video of mine in case you are looking at how to approach mist and fog in different ways for yourself. Now painting mist and fog is actually in some ways quite forgiving, especially when using watercolors because watercolors just lends its very naturally to creating a misty or a foggy look because of all the softness that you can achieve uh, using this medium and so it's a lot of wet on wet painting techniques and that's what I use and I tend to always start that way when I'm doing a misty scene I look for where the softness is in the photograph that I'm using and I will use watercolors to its strengths and use it for its strengths to create those soft edges and slowly work my way from going from a light uh, the lightest values down to the darkest values and the most detailed and that's usually how I tend to paint for the most part in any painting but it's the most clear and easy to understand when doing a painting like this and I would say that this is now this is something that I always strive to do but don't always do well and that is to be able to put down my strokes and not fuss with them too much and um, I think that's really the secret to getting a nice misty soft scene is is to not disturb the strokes quite too much um, and get into that zone where you're overworking or possibly overworking which means just basically touching it too much touching the paint too much and the paper too much and then you end up lifting and moving and pushing pigment around that you don't expect to and that's something I'm always very aware of myself doing and trying to catch myself before I do it and you know it's a work in progress all of us are and all of our journeys are and so I'm very gentle with myself when I catch myself doing it I know that I could do it better uh, and I just choose to say that I'm learning every single time. So for this month, I decided to approach this painting with a monochromatic, uh, a monochromatic palette which basically means a single color and um, this painting was actually chosen as a challenge for the members inside of my paint with me membership community because we are studying different ways to approach mist and fog and really investigating the different techniques that you can use in order to achieve the look that you're trying to get for these types of paintings so it ranges from using wet on wet to um, lifting to softening edges and really looking at how we can apply those techniques to different parts of a misty painting in order to create this overall look so it as with any you know watercolor painting you end up using pretty much all the techniques almost all the techniques that are in your tool belt or in your bag or that you can use and so I think that's what happens with this one too but like I mentioned if it helps you to maybe understand or put a little bit of structure around what kind of techniques are used in a misty painting they are again wet on wet which is what you saw me do at the very beginning which is basically wetting the paper and then applying paint and getting those soft edges and then it also is going to include a lot of softening edges and by softening edges i really mean you know putting down paint and then fading out or softening one edge of it in order to create that soft look so instead of using a wet on wet approach it's a little bit more controlled because you're taking an edge and then making it softer and then another technique that is used in these misty paintings really is layering because you need that contrast and the change in value to create depth and so there is a component of layering that happens in these paintings where you have put down your first layer it's light and then you're coming back and you're layering either a hard edge 
and usually a darker edge like what I'm doing right now. So you're really building up the depth of values and that's going to create contrast, it's going to create interest, and it's going to create the detail that's needed to provide the difference between seeing something that's soft and fuzzy or covered in mist between something that is crisp and not covered in mist and so it allows our brains to then compute that there is mist or fog at least that's the way i think about it so i tend to look at this painting and you know it might look a little bit complicated at the beginning because there are quite a few layers going on and elements but it uses all of the same techniques and it's just about deciding what order to do them in and you know i think a lot of people tend to ask you know um, me, at least when I've asked, you know, what order did you do things in or how did you decide or how did you plan? And for this one, I didn't really, um, I didn't have a plan. And so in, in terms of the order, because the layers are sort of intermixed to me, you know, there, there's definitely the background of the mountains and then you have the foreground of the trees, but the trees themselves are sort of intermixed and the, the mist kind of goes in between a few trees in the mid ground and a few trees in the foreground. It's just, it's got a, you know, a little bit of, um, stuff going on and so it's not like I can clearly decide I'm going to do this first and then this first and then this next and I think what I did try to do is just approach it in the sense of let me look at it from softest and lightest to darkest and more crisp and that's how I approached it so when you work that way I think using uh, you know soft and light building onto dark and crisp, then I feel like it allows your brain to process the image a little bit differently. And also it's a little bit less scary because you know that if you are painting light, you tend to have an opportunity to sort of cover your mistakes with the darker areas later. So you have a chance to uh, repair or fix things that might have gone wrong because you're going to come back and do a darker layer later. And so that was sort of the approach or the plan uh, for me, at least when I was doing this. I can't say that it was actually smooth. I don't think that I um, had a clear direction all the time. I just let it take me when I was painting. If it felt like it needed attention, then I would work on it. And if it felt like it could wait, and I could soften the edge and then come back to it later without worrying about it drying on me, I would do that. There's actually a section of this painting at the very end that um, I'll point out when we get there, but there's definitely a section where I thought I had softened it, which means I thought I had taken clean water and then blended it out to a point where there wouldn't be a hard edge left if the paint dried. And, um, I didn't realize I didn't do it. So I basically thought I did it. And then I ended up looking back and finding a hard edge and realizing I had to go and fix it. And it's still possible. You know, we think that sometimes with watercolors, I, I think that I can speak for myself, but I think that, oh no, I've done this and it's too late because it's already dried. But uh, it's still repairable in, in many ways, like I said, especially if you're working from light to dark because I just covered up with a darker value. It might not be, you know, the best practice or it might not result in the cleanest, you know, the cleanest brushstrokes, but it still works. It doesn't end up looking like a glaring error. And and so I think that, you know, there's, um, you know, a fearlessness that you can have when you go into something like this, because like I said, mist and fog paintings are actually quite forgiving in their own way with watercolors. So it's actually a great way to practice, um, especially if you're only using a single color like this, like a monochromatic palette, because you're also not really worrying about color mixing. That's another thing that's beautiful about this process. You only have to really worry about one color and then what you're able to do because you're only using one color is that you are then able to concentrate on values because watercolors is a way for you to you know, take one color and then change the ratio of water to paint and then end up with a different set of values. So you're, you're still building these uh, techniques and skills and experience when you're painting with a single color, even if it might look, you know, a little bit, um, 
not flat, but you know, it might look simplistic because you're only using one color. So there's still challenges just by using a monochromatic palette. So I would encourage you to try it if you haven't, especially with a painting like this or a photo like this, you really do get an opportunity to really concentrate on things like values. So that's just my two cents. I don't really um, have any words of wisdom other than that, but I felt like, uh, you know, I had to go back and forth a little bit with this one and um, fix things as I went. But I mean, you know, I think that's the acceptance of knowing that your paintings will go that way and having the ability to be flexible and, you know, <laughs> go with the flow of the water. <laughs> it sounds so cheesy, but it's kind of true. Um, just kind of go with where the painting wants to take you is um, an exercise in, in really letting go. And I think it's a powerful way to train ourselves to um, be more fluid with watercolor, especially if you're looking to paint a little bit more loosely rather than getting very detailed. And um, I, f I think I've shared this before, but I think watercolors really has taught me how to let go of a lot of perfectionist tendencies, let go of, you know, having to get it exactly perfectly right and being a little bit more free with, with um, applying paint and just painting in general, maybe art in general. And so at this point, I want to point out, like I mentioned before, I was going to point out, there's a little section on the left-hand side where you can see that I thought I was blending it out by creating a watery area and then putting a little bit of paint in it, but the paint moved, right? The paint will move with the water. It moved all the way to the edge of that water, and then I'm not catching it as I'm painting, and it has created a hard edge. And so at the very end of this, after I finished the trees, it was actually after I... <laughs> stepped back and I thought I was done and then I realized that there was this edge like oh no <laughs> I didn't see that and it was so I was it wasn't even like I was in the middle of painting I had thought I was finished and then I noticed this little section and then I came back and I fixed it and the way that um, you can fix something like this is like I said you're using a darker color and um, what I did was I used just a slightly darker color um, but I used my brush to sort of soften the edge like kind of scrub it because at that point it wasn't completely dry it was on its way to drying so sort of like what you would call maybe a damp paper, not completely dry, but just a little damp. Um, so I was still able to do a little bit of work on that paint edge. So when I scrubbed with my brush and some water, it would lift a little bit. And so if you can lift the paint, then you can also soften that edge. And so I basically just softened the edge, added a little bit of paint that was, you know, the same color, um, similar color, um, water to paint ratio, and then, even I even came back and um, detailed it with a little bit of you know extra trees. Um, so this isn't exactly um, ex you know true to the reference photo. It's heavily like you know inspired and but the trees, if you look at them compared to the reference photo, are not exact um, in not exact locations, not exact fog locations, none of that. And I think that that's okay. You know, I I mean I feel like if we get too tied up with trying to get it exactly right we lose sight of the bigger picture so I just you know wanted to share that as well um, I actually also decided here that I would add a little bit it just felt like you know if you look at the photo it actually is white it's like a white area of fog but I felt like the painting needed it needed some something there like a little bit of shadow or a little bit of that mountain peeking through and so I, I added it I just to creative liberty because sometimes you step back and you look and it just looked like a big white void and so I decided to add a little bit to it and that's you know it's a little bit intuitive it's based on your own eye um, there's no right or wrong and so that's just what I chose to do so there it is I fixed that little edge and you saw it, it was pretty quick and this is how it turned out so I hope that this video was helpful if you'd like to find out more about the Paint With Me Challenge or the Paint With Me community I'm going to leave links in the description box below Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.